Hi everyone, today I talk about five investment property tips that might help you going forward. On this channel, if you watch my videos quite often, you'll know that I invested into my first property last year. And since investing into that property, um, I feel like my knowledge in property development has doubled, tripled. Um, I've learned just so many things and going forward when I hopefully go into my second property investment, hopefully next year I hope. I'll take a lot of things that I have learned from this year and add them into there and it probably saved me a lot of mistakes. But the whole reason why I wanted to make this video today and the whole reason of the channel is that I try and do things that help you guys that are watching the videos and I try and the whole point is that I enjoy talking about this and I enjoy sharing the things that I learned with other people and trying to help them um, in their investments as well and it's just the whole reason why I just enjoy doing it so uh, the whole point is I'm trying to share all these things and hopefully the things that I share will help you guys and help you in your investments whatever you're doing which kind of route you're going down you might be doing the exact same as me and doing your property investments your stock investments and that's what I'm trying to share and when I share this information today hopefully it saves you a few of these problems going forward so you don't have to deal with them and there's just things just to be cautious of if you're going into like the property investment area. Now I invest my, invested into my first property I think last year and in that time there's definitely quite a few things that have gone wrong and I'm going to go through the, probably the five big ones that I wish someone kind of told me going forward. You kind of hear a few of these mentioned and you don't really realise until you actually do it but uh, these are definitely the five things I wish someone kind of like told me and helped me going before I got this property just to plan out a little bit more because I think it would have saved me a fair bit of time, a fair bit of money and it probably have redeveloped the property a little bit quicker. Number one point is the budget. Now I didn't really, I knew how expensive redeveloping a house was going to be especially when the house you have depending on how much work it needs will be a bigger budget and this is something just to be cautious of. It's always worth having your budget set out and not getting to the point that I currently am in right now which is a little bit of a problem is that I kind of did not set enough budget aside for any problems and because the budget I had was kind of right if everything goes straight forward then I'll have just enough money and then I'll be able to run it out. But the problem now that I've had is that I've hit quite a few problems and a few of them problems have been really expensive problems and I have not budgeted for them at all. And because of them problems really, and also a few changes as well, and because of them problems really means now that my kind of property that um, should really be ready right now um, is on hold because I'm having to save up enough money to do the last few redevelopments where the property can get finished. So what I would say is I would do a budget and then after you've done your budget, add another 20% from that budget on top of it and that should just give you enough money going forward. Some of the things that have exactly gone wrong and like on my property is that uh, I no point did I think I was going to redevelop the garage and convert that into an extra room, um, an extra bedroom, um, which I have done. So that um, exactly cost like 1000 for the window. It cost another 2000 to have the floor put in um, level with the rest of the house. Um, and then also we had um, a, like a loft space put in the loft. Uh, in the top of the garage because it was uh, a little bit of a slant and that created a little bit more space and then that cost another thousand and your plastering and everything like that so that was a quite expensive cost and um, we also had a bit of an accident where uh, a family member was doing some work in the loft they missed a step in the loft and it ended up them falling through the loft and um, so they were kind of in the loft and they missed the beam and they fell through the like the, the roof uh, of the actual hallway and they like went through the roof and landed on the like hallway of the floor below them um, and so that had to have a new kind of like um, ceiling really put on there in that hallway where he fell through um, which isn't ideal uh, and just plenty of things like that a couple of things that wasn't on the surveyor's report with the house and some problems that had to get changed there um, a couple of like water pipes bursting, all these things it just kind of adds up really so uh, uh, definitely plan out a budget um, and once you plan your budget add 20% for a little bit of room and hopefully if you do hit any problems that would solve it for you. Number two, now this is something that I wish I'd done and I've reflected on it and it's definitely something that I'm, it's my number one thing that 
I'm going to definitely take on going forward. And that is to get the price down on the house, especially if you're needing to do a lot of work. If you save that amount of money on that house, you don't have to pay a bigger deposit. And also that will save you to do the work. Recently, um, a family member died and uh, we had to sell their house. And the amount of people that bargained with that house that had no problems made me realise the house that I was buying and all the problems were that was in it. I really should have brought that price down. Now, I brought the price down actually by... Um, I think it was 18,000 but looking back I probably should have pushed that for another at least another 3,000 um, just because of the amount of problems that were there so I would say that don't be scared to give up an opportunity if you think you're overpaying for that house you know get that price down even a lot of people now are, are offering um, prices that are actually like lower uh, for a house than what people are asking even in a good condition so uh, that's just something to be cautious of. Number three um, plan out the work. Now this is something that would have been a massive time saver for me is if we planned out the work because when I were doing it I didn't really get an order of doing things and if I got an order of doing things it ended up with a few people like crossing over jobs and getting each in each other's way. So for example there was like an um, electrician and a person who were putting up the board and then someone else doing the plastering and really I should have got them in on separate days and then the, plast the plaster ended up waiting for the person that was boarding to do all the boarding around the house so he could plaster it and because the plaster were kind of there for a little bit longer than what it should have been he ended up putting his prices up and really I should have got the person to get everything ready for plastering a week before the plasterer and then he could have done it all that would have saved masses, mass, a massive amount of time and um, like people putting down floorboards and it would have been easier to do a rewire um, through the floorboards before they went down uh, and that ended up us taking the ceiling off downstairs to do the rewire upstairs because we couldn't bring the floorboards back up and just problems like that so I'd say just plan out what everything that you're going to do and it will save you a massive amount of time and it kind of links with um, my fourth point which is don't rush um, don't get everything squeezed into that you see all the time that people are like oh yeah I'm going to flip this around in like six weeks um, don't rush it you know set yourself a nice time frame write down you know every month what jobs you're looking to do and then uh, in that month get that work booked in for that month spread it out so you're not kind of getting it all it's all going crazy in the house and you know like i say you haven't got people in each other's way plan it out how you want everything done every month and it will be absolutely a time saver and you're not dealing with so many people trying to get all these quotes in and it is really helpful just to spread it all out and just save yourself a big massive headache and number five, one that I definitely didn't consider this to happen, but it happened, and it is, um, I, I'm not going to say the, the word on, on YouTube, but um, don't try to really annoy your neighbours, because it is, I did not really realise how many neighbours would get really offended with you doing work on a property on the street that they live on, and it's kind of like, well, the work that I'm doing is going to improve the street value because the house is going to be worth more. So your house is going to be worth more. And also the house is going to look a lot better and that will make the whole street look better and your house value will go up because the house, the street of the, the your house is on is going to look better because my house is better. And it was kind of like, you know, we should be working as kind of like a bit of a team here and you should appreciate that what we're doing isn't forever, but it will make a massive difference to what the street. Um, and it was like, you know, like I, there were people coming around complaining about um, power tools being noisy, um, especially like work on a Sunday, which I kind of understand. But, um, you know, you would cut the grass on a Sunday. So power tools really. And it was at like midday, like complaining, um, like even getting rid of like waste and like having a fire in the garden and people coming around complaining that you're having a fire in the garden. It was like it's you know my garden you know i can have a fire in there if i want um and it was yeah it was really crazy because overall i think that like we must have had like two two neighbors actually come around um one multiple times to complain and luckily luckily enough i think they were just like really awkward people and some of the neighbours that were actually like really close to us, like on the houses next to us, were actually really nice people. And eventually, because we got to know them, um, they actually, we, we started working together really well. And um, we started doing, it was like an open garden, like that everyone kind of used. And that we, like together, we kind of redeveloped that. And um, they kind of knew like a few people that would 
um, do some of the work for quite cheap as well. So they sent them um, my way as well, which was uh, huge and really helpful because some of the people that were getting in were kind of letting us down or not doing a good job as well. So that, that kind of thing really helped as well. So really, th there's just something to be cautious of and even like things that seem really stupid to you, um, people that are like just really angry people in general, um, might get really annoyed at some of the things that you do and it's just not worth the hassle that they can cause you so just you know just be cautious of that going forward and um, so those are then my five investment property tips I'm going to give you that would be really useful useful for you if you're looking to get into property investment and um, hopefully it helped you and maybe there were things that you didn't really realize and um, if you're looking to get in your first investment property um, good luck to you you'll need it and um, but thank you for watching and thank you for all the support recently we're getting towards now, um, well, we just passed the 300 subscriber mark and uh, like I say, I'd like to hit the 500 subscriber mark by Halloween if we could do that. So if we could, um, that'd be amazing. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, give the video a like, subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.